position. You're on. Okay, is the recorder on? Yep. Okay. Uh, good morning. This is Friday, October 16th, in the Sarkman's work session here at the town hall. Call to order. First item is uh, minutes of 10 5 20. I have no changes. I'll move approval. I'll second. You all set to vote? Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 3 0. Next are the non public minutes of 10 5 20. I have no changes. I'll move approval. A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 3 0. Appointments. Mr. Jim Bean. Come on down. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? <clears throat> All right, well, I guess I should start with the things that we've worked on since the last time we met. Uh, we replaced it in Old Rusted Elk Colbert on Federal Corners Road. Uh, we completed the crack ceiling for this year. Uh, we removed the swim lines. We've been graveling the low road ed edges as needed. Uh, we replaced the two culverts at the end of Dame Road, so we're in good shape for next year on paving that section. Um, we excavated out uh, some of the ditch line on Ledge Hill Road. We prepared several areas where the broken pavement was for the, uh, you know, we had broken pavement from the plow damage and whatnot. And they actually started repaving those in yesterday, so a few of those have been already done. Uh, on uh, Federal Corners, that section's been done. It looked, it looked good. I thought it came out really nice. Uh, they're planning to come back on Tuesday to finish the rest of it. Who's doing that work? Uh, GMS. <clears throat> and um, we prepared the Durgan Swale for paving uh, that we talked about. And they actually started paving that. I, I think they only got about halfway on that, so we'll finish that on Tuesday as well. <coughs> uh, we've done some of the ditching on Shirley Way. And we have also picked up the new sanders, so those are looking good. Uh, and we started some of the work on uh, Woodland Road so that we can plow it this winter. Um, when we were ditching, we did find ledge, you know, which is... Not a big surprise, right? It's not what we were hoping for, was, right. you know, because now obviously it adds more cost to it. And, uh, but, you know, some of the culverts that were kind of short that we said, oh, should be extended. Well, now we know kind of why <laughs> they were short, because right behind the opening was the ledge. Mm -hmm. So we're going to need to do some work to that in the future. <clears throat> road grading has started. We've got a few of the roads done on the dirt roads. And um, Town Truck is currently at the dealership having some of the electronics looked at for the transmission. And um, I've reached out to Lakes Region Paving for apron quotes. And also I've made contact with Ed Butler for the heating system. Uh, for a proposal. We haven't got the proposal, but we've reached out to him and mm -hmm. he will get it to us. I know he's extremely busy at the moment. And uh, <clears throat> I did get a couple tree proposals in. You know, what we talked about before, I put 10 trees up to bid. I contacted four local tree guys. Two proposals came in. Um, one of them came in really nice. Mm -hmm. I was pretty excited about, about that. Um, and I think, I think that's what we have going on with things that we've accomplished since last month. We still have, you know, more stuff to do. Fall projects include, uh, we have more ditching. Cannon Hill really needs some work, you know, both sides of the hill, you know, before we have washout problems. 
Sentinel Road needs some drainage work. Uh, Federal Forest needs some drainage work. Long Pond needs drainage work, which we are you know, doing some as we speak. Um, <clears throat> if money allows, and I don't know that it's going to, to be honest with you, but we do have the pipe, the culvert, to replace the Adida Farms Road um, entrance culvert. Um, when I did look at that, you know, it is a metal pipe. There's no point in going through all this work for a 10 year old pipe already. So I think we're going to change Dig it. Dig it out and replace it. Replace it and do the head walls, you know, as we talked about. And uh, does it make sense to go with precast headers where that's on a hill? I think at least on the uh, on the uphill side probably makes some sense there for sure. Um, well, and then bundle the projects and one truck can do it. True. Two. Yep. I want to get a price on that just to see what they are going to charge us for that. Um, <clears throat> Um, and also, if money allows, there's also the culvert on Shirley Way. Oh, excuse me, it's not Shirley Way. It's actually uh, the beginning of Shirley Way, which is Chandler. Chandler Road. That would be a great time to change that culvert, just because it, well, up until recently, has been really dry. And there's like no water around it. Um, we do have that culvert in stock. I don't think it's a, a too big of a project, but you know, again, depends if we have the money to do that project. Okay, that's, and, that's, and that's part of that separate article on the warrant, right? Um, it's not anymore. We've run out of budget on that, on the, on the drainage project. Okay. Um, but it is a red list culvert and it does, it needs to be done. Um, it's and, not just the culvert that needs work, right? Uh, no, no, the whole road needs work. We've got a lot of the ditching done, which I'm thinking will help, but that the road is pretty deteriorated. It's pretty alligator cracked, I suspect. You know, we did dig out two areas and they're gonna pave those in where we, the plow has dug in already. But I suspect there'll be more plows going to in this year, just because the condition of the road and is And the intersection with Shirley Way, do you recommend changing that culvert? At the beginning of Shirley yes. Way? Yep, yep, I think that needs to be done as well. Uh, not on the red list, but if we're going to fix the road, it well, you know, should make sense good. when you're bundling yep. projects. Uh, it's worked well in the past. Correct. Uh, also, one of the projects we'd like to do is do some trimming around the guardrails. Um, we got to put up some delineator posts in a few spots that are missing. I noticed other towns put a red one so the snow plow sees it when it's covered with snow and then a green one afterwards. Yeah, so we actually, it's one of my projects too, we usually put out whips um, and we put tape on them to mark the plow hazards. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got to finish up the road grading. Uh, we need to clean out all the culverts and check the catch basins. Uh, straighten out signposts, which we have been started, we've already started on. We've got a pretty good start on that. Uh, do the cut the dead trees for what, what left we have on the budget, which you know we actually have somebody lined up already for that. We got a good price on that. Uh, finish up what we can with Williams Road project and all in the winter sand. And then as far as uh, price, well, let's go to the paving, I guess. <clears throat> so we have $350,000 budget for next year, currently, for paving. And the Dane Road project is going to come out to $175,962.50. That's without shoulders. Uh, North Line Road to finish that project would be, in, no, Dane Road would be with a top coat. So the whole road is complete with a top coat. Um, and then North Line, where we're going to finish the second half this year, but we, we're going to hold off on the top coat for one year. And that one's going to be $81,750. And then we also talked about the top of the top section of Federal Corners, starting at <coughs> North Line intersection and going to the end of the pavement, which is by Burley Road, which is 2,330 feet. Uh, if we 
uh, grind that up and pave that with a base coat, we're looking at $65,044. Uh, so a total, what we have is $322,756.50. Plus, we don't have a quote for the gravel. I think that's going to put us right at the $350,000 mark. So, but that's got, that has no road prep in it. Correct. Right. Correct. And, and you did ask me to get a number together for you for the road prep that needs to be done, which uh, looks like we need five culverts to be replaced, or quite a few tree removal, ditching along the roadsides, and cut and remove all the rocks that are poking up. So I think we're looking at around $37,500 for that. And that's the big thing that I guess we don't know where that money's coming from. Yet. Well, that's all, that's all 2021 money, so none of it's there yet. I mean, we're, we're, putting, yep. we're putting those together. That's well, $359,000. You're $9,000 away from the number. And then I don't know if, it, if you want to get ahead on some of the other projects for right. the following. So the prepared. road prep you're talking about is road prep for the work we're doing next year, right? Correct. So that's stuff that, as we discussed, if we can, the more what we get done now, the better. Correct. Especially um, culverts. Because uh, then we're in a better position to get into the paving process early in the year rather than late in the season. Yep. I mean, what we ran into on Dame this year because of unanticipated work that had to be done is we didn't get the set paving done until the fall. So it seems to work out better. We're ready to go in the spring. We get him when he's got a window to June or whatever. Um, yeah, we well, usually try to schedule for June. Right. That's a target yeah. date. Right. So. Really, the question on the road prep is, is there $38,000 or some portion of it that we can identify this year to get that work done? Is, is North, there's no renovation left on North 1? No, there is. Uh, we only did half of it this year, so there's still the second half so is, to be. is that renovation part of that $37,000 road prep? Um, what little is left, correct? Yeah, $8,250 left. What's that? I'm, I'm showing $8,250 in encumbered funds on that project. And Dorgan Road, East Edge, Paving Square. So, so that's, yeah, you know, that's, yeah, we're looking at, this is money that's left from last year that we set aside. Right. This is not, you're looking at your regular budget. And budget okay. this year, and you said, okay, so that's that, gone. But yeah. So that was for North Line Encumbered. Got almost fourteen thousand dollars in those two lines. What was the second one? Uh, Durgan Road East Edge Pavement Swale. Oh, so that's actually being worked on already. That's that's spent. That, that money's already okay. So the fifty-six hundred and thirty-two dollars is getting spent. Is that what you're saying? I thought it was seventy-five hundred. So there's seventy-five hundred encumbered. You yeah, you've already. You okay. Use, yes. use about nineteen hundred. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for the thing. Yep. Yeah, and now so fifty six hundred left. Yep. Yeah, and they're up there paving. Well, they right. started the paving already in that square. So the other one is the. Only, is that only half of that's been done so far. At painting. Hmm. Or what is this? It's hard to, it's hard to What's that? Well, it goes from page one to page two. And on page two, the top line is North Line re Renovation. Yep. That's not a continuation of the painting, I hope. Uh, or is it for us? It is. Right. So 7750 out of the 16000 has been spent. So we got 8250 left. That's, yeah, that's. Is that painting that's, or is that renovation? Uh, that that includes, as I remember, that includes the windows, painting, and, and window replacement okay, here. Okay, but it has nothing to do with road work, right? Nothing it's to do with what? Road, road work. Road Is work. North no, Line no. the name of the company? The a little, right. A little uh, confusing. 
Sorry. Yeah. All right, so we don't have any encumbered funds left for highway mitigation. And have we factored in the state money that we got? Has that been pushed into the budget? I believe so. Is it? That, that's what we use. I well, the SP, whatever. That, uh, the only thing that we would have an opportunity is if we had unanticipated funds from the state, not a regular grant. The regular grant money is already been factored in. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I look at your, uh, are you done? Yes. I look at your expenses through today. This yeah, one, this one. And I noticed that you've planned well. The 13000 that you went over on spring maintenance, you saved on summer maintenance, so that cancels out and you're right on schedule. Um, for winter maintenance, you have 119 and under winter maintenance, what if we have another storm? We had one the other day with some trees down, right? We and did. Th and this is hurricane season. Yeah, it's happened twice where we had to do uh, trees, tree cleanup. It's yeah. happened twice in the last one. And, I and hopefully those are some of the ones that need to come down anyway. They weren't. <laughs> 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 and under winter, winter maintenance, the last couple of years, you're right on schedule. You can, you're going to go through 120,000 by the time you buy sand and salt and it's put possible. your snow plows on in, in one mm -hmm. month. So the budget is just about spoken for, right? That's my guess. Yeah, I think the projects that I have, I, I don't see us getting through. There's not enough money in the budget. Now, I guess I'm a little aggressive on the ideas that need to be done. Um, you know, especially with addiction and stuff like that. <clears throat> I feel like it needs to be done before winter because when spring hits and we get all the runoff, if those ditches aren't correct, then we start losing road edges and whatnot and have problems you know, over topping or whatever. But we still can't go over the budget, can we? Correct. Well, it'd be nice to come in about 20 grand light and then, and then encumber the 20 for next year's well, That would be my strategy, yes. Yeah. And he and I have talked about that. So, going back to the road prep for the projects, I know we're jumping around a little bit. Of that 38,000, that you've identified, um, part of that's culvert, some of it's other stuff, right? Having, uh, I, I, I would think having in your mind a pecking order as to the as we identify some money, okay, here's the first thing, the most important thing for us to get done now, you know what I'm saying, kind of work your way through it. And uh, culverts, obviously, if they can be replaced this year rather than having to wait until the year we're paving gives it a time to settle in, give us a better base. Uh, anyway, have <coughs> those prioritized so that as we can free up funds, I think would be yep. helpful. And I think you know. Yep. You're spot on with the culprits first, just so they settle. Yeah. And what else? And I, uh, if we can get the tree tree work, some of the tree work done, that would be nice too. Yeah. And then the ditching. Do but just from a public relations standpoint, I think if you could pick out a couple of culprits in, in some other part of town, same with your tree work. I mean, it seems as though all our money's been focused in one general area and I think we need to do whatever it is down on the neck over yep. in Melbourne. We we do actually have some tree work scheduled for on the neck. Okay. That that's actually scheduled over there. I think we need to hmm? inform the populace that our highway department's working on the whole town. Yeah and we actually just uh, we have on the schedule too uh, there's a huge dip off the um, go when you first turn on to Eagle Mirror, mm -hmm. where the culvert crossing has sunk. Um, so that's scheduled to be paved in next Tuesday as well. Good. No. Right. We're, did we hire that person? 
Kathy? We did. We did. Okay, we've hired a, a and this is why I'm bringing up while you're here. We've hired a person to be the Secretary for Conservation and Budget, but also I'm interested in having that person be available to you for things like updating the paving um, schedule that Lakes Region did, updating the culvert. Um, we actually did complete our end of the culvert uh, update. Right. I'm just trying to take some of the clerical yep. work off of you. I, I appreciate and that. Just project oriented as opposed to, you know, a general secretary, which I'm sure you handle all on, on your own pretty well. But we've asked you from time to time over the years to give us a projection or give us some um, study of one thing or another or how one thing or another is going. So we wanted to give you a resource that you could reach out to and say, plug them into the, and this is a person who was the bookkeeper co-owner of a I guess 20 or 30 man plumbing operation. Mm -hmm. oh, so okay. she knows business, like your business for instance, the, not a particular road building, but at least you know what sort of managerial things are needed and how to focus on certain tasks. I look forward to that. Yep, thanks. Good. I have another topic that I talked to you about. Please. Yes. Yep. Uh, do you want to start with that? Or? Why did you? Okay. So. I liked your ideas. Okay. So I did reach out. Uh, the guy that gave us the best tree quote was uh, Levering Tree Service, who's also local. He's worked, uh, done a lot of work for us, does good work. Um, and I mentioned the idea of, you know, if we had somebody come in, you know, we had them on a week to week schedule. He said he gave us a great price of a thousand dollars a day, and that's for a bucket truck, a chipper, and three men. And I thought that was extremely fair. That's probably half. Of so, have you hired him to do any of the work? He's going to be doing the ten trees that we have. So we need to listed. figure out <clears throat> what a day gets us. Yeah. Because we know how many, more or less, how many trees we have that need to go. So now we need to figure out how many days is that from a tree guy standpoint so we can plug it into the budget so we're not just grabbing a, a number for your tree removal line, for instance. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if you pick easier trees, you can do a lot of them, but right. then we have the difficult ones. I know that we have one on Sodom Road, it's, you know, very tall. We have one on Cross Neck that's overhanging the wires already, um, you know. You should be able to get some help out of the co-op on that, I would think. We've asked about it, <laughs> so, and it's on their list. Yeah. You know, it's been a year. <laughs> uh, so, anyhow, some of them are more difficult than others. Some of them, I think, could go quickly, and some of them could take, you know, Well, we can, I mean, we need to establish some kind of an average so that we put the right number on that tree removal line. Okay. So that we were, I don't think that we're going to get all of them done in one year. Nope. But that we've got some projections well, to how. Yeah, what we're trying to do is to, is to, to trend it down toward keeping up with what's going on, getting rid of the, the, the back inventory and not, not killing it in one year, but, but making, making a good, uh, because there's going to be more and more. Yeah, the yep, there is more. It happens every year. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a lot of dead trees. We got to get caught up on those. But then, also, there's a lot of tree canopies that seem to be coming down and further and further. They, they really need to be trimmed up. So there's also that that we've actually haven't budgeted for. Storm damage. Uh, well, you know, storm damage. We need it. We've been trying to do most of it ourselves. But if we get caught up right now, mm -hmm. I would love you know to. Just have them focus on the stuff that we can't do. If they could do that, and then maybe once we get caught up, or if it is a bad storm, and we've had those. If it's a it. bad storm, how do you get an outside vendor? They're all tied up. Correct. I guess if we did have somebody. Under, under your program, guess what? He's available, right? Correct. Um, you know, that is something that 
we have been trying to do is we <coughs> have used a couple of vendors just in case of that situation in the past. Um, so that if one is tied up during that storm damage, we have at least a second option. But I think if we had somebody that comes in, you know. I don't know that we can afford to have I mean, if I were in the tree business, I wouldn't sign up for the notion that if there's a bad storm, I'm tough to grow a tree guy. Because that's an opportunity for <clears throat> people to make money and people to do a lot of work. I don't know that there's enough work just in tough to grow for them to eliminate all other market. I don't to just focus on us. So. I understand. And I, I, I guess I'm not expecting that they would. Yeah. 100%, but if they could help us out some, get the worst of it, you know, stuff that we can't handle. And, and maybe it doesn't have to happen that day. Maybe it could be the next day they could help us out or something like that, that's real bad. Well, when I drove around with you, you expanded my horizons. First of all, you identified dozens of intersections that really don't meet the state requirement as far as visibility. You know, and the point is if it's a little bit slow, they could spend only half a day. Maybe they could take a house or two down too. So. That would be nice. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, the other thing is that you have projects that, that are coming up that you need to take the trees out before you do culverts and before you, you, you start to pay, right? Yeah, it's much better if we could do that first. Yeah. And, and, if it, and some of those things like your culverts really should be done a year in advance, right? Oh, absolutely. Culverts. And the tree work would be nice a year in advance too because it kind of gives us a little bit easier, uh, you know, we can pull out the stumps from why we're ditching. You know, it makes sense to do it kind of at the same time. So when we were talking about your budget, was the last time we were together, or you, you, you'd given us kind of a, uh, a, a, a starting point for a discussion. At that time, I think we were talking, I, I don't remember how much we were talking about bumping the, the tree removal up. I, I put a place marker of 25,000 right. in there. Mm -hmm. Um, which is not a huge increase over the last year, but it's, it's certainly an right. increase. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I suppose if we had somebody, if we were going to do the whole once a week thing, yeah, then we'd probably need 50,000. So, out of that line, is it your expectation that it would just be the contracted tree service, or would you take your costs out of that line as well? Because $25,000 is going to give you what? Every other week, two basically. days a month. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah. Well, that's everything. now all of the 25 or 24 to 25 has gone away. Does that leave you any money to work year end of that particular line? So, I have, as I've been doing it from the last few years or whatever, uh, I don't usually take storm damage, damage cleanup mm -hmm. out of that budget because we do need that money for. A bucket truck. Mm -hmm. We, you know, that pretty much just bucket truck work. Okay. So you feel comfortable with if we went to twenty five thousand dollars on the tree line, that that would provide you with the necessary money to do contracted tree work, and I, not, I think it's and a not adversely impact your own budget. Yep. Tree work. I, I think, think that's, that's low, sir. I think it's the minimum number. We You're already have spent twenty six to. Twenty-seven thousand dollars this year on trees. Some of it has gone under the Dame Road project and warrant articles. Some of it has gone under the other warrant articles. Uh, some of it's gone under Willand Road. Um, as you know, I work with you, and every week I, I take your bills and I do a program audit of where they're being spent. I'm just going to do what I in my conversation with you is. This is a guy that's under your control. And whether it's storm damage, pick a pickup, or working on special projects, or hey, I have the light company coming in, take that tree down, uh, you know, down on the neck, a thousand dollars times fifty weeks. So is it, are you throwing a number out for us? Yes. And what is that going to do? First of all, it covers the work that we're already doing. But that's exactly what a selectman have talked about is, let's get culverts and trees a year or two ahead of when you pave. 
and I know when you rode around with me, um, you know, and you pointed out, well, I have a dead tree here, and I have a dead tree here. My snowplow hits that tree, but I didn't put a tape on it. When you're there, I think that with your leadership, and you have nine years of, of saving the town money, is, hey, look at Tree Company, take those three things out while your bucket truck is there. You know, you, you sold me. So is it, I, I, I just to draw a line here. Yep. Are you saying $50,000 for that line? Yes. Okay. <coughs> so we need to, if we're going to consider that, I think we need to look at the budget in total. Are there, we've already upped the paving, but that's a Warren article issue. But in the operating budget, are there other lines that need to be expanded beyond what you gave us the other day? Uh, there was. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's a, a, a lot of money, but we talked about expanding um, the white line, uh, the stop lines, line, and also that the line strike. <coughs> right. So I don't have the figures on that yet, um, but we'll have those shortly. I remember saying we want to put stop lines on all town roads that intersect state highways, right? Correct. I don't remember. Uh, discussion about expanding the road striping to additional roads. Oh, I thought we agreed on, uh, I wrote it down as we talked about Tufton Road Neck Road, and I think we talked about uh, Dame Road. We talked about Dame Road, and we talked about High Street going up and kind of going around New Road. New Road. Um, We've talked about that for years. I, I, my opinion is High Street and New Road, Tough to Road, Neck Road, probably. Uh, again, it's just one person talking, but, but. Uh, yeah, once you start stripping, you have to strip forever. So I guess I would want to look at the number. I guess give us two numbers. Give us the number of just the stop lines. <coughs> and, and then add the, the roads individually and we'll just figure out what we want to put in there. But I, I mean, I, Tough to Road Neck, I think, probably needs that in line. Yeah. It's, it's just so narrow, and I think yeah. it helps. It helps a lot. Mm -hmm. I really do feel like it helps a lot. Um, High Street is also narrow, but, you know. Yeah, but it's it, less yeah. of a feeder road than, than the back. Obviously, there's more houses yeah. down on the yeah. back and more traffic. What do you guys think about um, Dame Road once it's all completed? Do you think that road would be a good candidate? I'm going to say yes. Dame Road is getting used more and more and more. And as the 109 deteriorates, yeah. that, that why it's gone downhill so quick. I'll be honest with you, I was blown away with how much traffic is actually on that road when we're trying to do our road work. Mm -hmm. It's nonstop all day long. You have to have traffic control, it's that bad. And we put signs out, so that hoping that they would see the sign at the beginning of the road and just go around. And we still have a lot of traffic. Uh, well, uh, one thing that helps inform me is uh, is stats, and I don't know that we have traffic counts on all of these roads. I mean, I I look at the ones that right now we're doing, we're striping the major, mm -hmm. the primary town roads. So as we as we want to strike more roads, uh, the the next candidates ought to be the next most busy roads in town, uh, and uh, I, I'm. Certainly not necessarily well calibrated, but just based on my own observation and driving patterns and that sort of thing. So I guess that comes back to getting uh, getting Andy and his crew to get us some that probably makes traffic sense. Count information. I think we're going to come out and I, the same ideas, but yeah. yeah. I mean, it, and there's any number of arguments, both pro and con. I and mean, once you strike a road, let's just say you strike the road, traffic counts going to go up. Because the estimation on the part of 
drivers not native is that it's a striped road that goes somewhere. Unstriped roads are residential streets. Are they're not really some? They're not a way to get somewhere. So I mean, we have to kind of balance what, what we're looking for from a neighborhood street standpoint. Like High Street, for instance, I don't see as a street to get anywhere other than 171. Well, I lived at the end of it, and I'm absolutely amazed at the traffic. Really? Yes. Well, I'm going to make a comment right now, if I can. I wear another hat. Okay, and I'm absolutely amazed. North Line Road, Federal Corner Road, <coughs> Dane Road, Durgan Road. They are racetracks. And I'm not speaking hyperbole. And to me, when we do and build a road the way you do it, you just don't pave over clay or rocks or stumps or, or whatnot. You've gone on a program, it's a 10 year program, and the roads are better. Sodom Road, the busiest town road in, in town. Ledge Hill Road, the second busiest and Durgan Road, the third business, because years ago studies were done. And the fact that, you know, I look at uh, Tuftonboro Neck Road. These are busy, busy roads. And when I rode around with you, you were articulate that you do the roadbed, you pave, put two coats on, you do the culverts, you do the, the sides so the roads don't break down, and then you strike them. It calms traffic. You know, you, I know, being a, a snow plow operator, that it helps you plowing snow. It does. And until you plow mm -hmm. snow, they don't realize that you keep an eye on your mirror and you just scraped over the yellow line and, and now you, you're not off the road. So I'm in favor of every year, incrementally, as we improve our roads, they get striped and they get shouldered and they get stop lined. Now, if the voters want to turn it down at town meeting, hmm. someone will stand up and say, I think we're spending 50000 too much on, this, on, on roads. I know I can't do a line item veto, but I know we, we cut the budget by 50 k But then, yeah, and I don't see that as an effective way to manage, because, you know, two other selectmen might say, fine, we'll cut the 50000 lines but then we may say no we'll take the 50 grand out of yes. something else yes right? that is the selectman's the option budget committee's going to look at it before anybody yep. or, right. after we do um but so, the, re the recent history is and one of them stood up uh a meeting two meetings ago and said i'm thinking of adding three hundred thousand dollars to the road budget <laughs> Right. I mean, so that's that's one person standing up. Yes. Yeah. Right. That was for real. And and, and right everybody's there. everybody. I I think it's a fair statement that most people would like more stuff. Yes. But most people push push back against the cost of doing yes. it. Yes. So uh, it all of these things that we're talking about that are nice things to have mm -hmm. beyond what we've done in the past. I think we have to be judicious in our approach. So, because, you know, uh, yeah, there's dollar here, a dollar there, and pretty soon it adds up to real money. Yeah, correct. And, and, and there are still issues that, that we need to address that aren't part of these line items per se, but. There's a bigger picture? They, they <laughs> crop up all the time. Right. I mean, I like the stop line. Rehabilitation, I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. I think we need to spend a little more money on signage. I so then, a, I mean, not a ton, but I think there's some signs that need to get up. Yeah, there. we've actually, Lloyd and I have been doing a little study on that ourselves, been driving around and trying to, yeah. you know, we've been writing down for each road what needs to happen for signs. I mean, I don't think, and it, with all due respect, Lloyd, I, mm -hmm. I appreciate your position, but I don't think you had another vote on this board for a $50,000 line, line item for trees. Uh, I mean, I think that the tree thing is certainly a discussion we need to have because we need to get a program together. The striping of roads that are done, I mean, I'd love to see a price for doing Durgan Road, but I'm not interested in a town-wide striping. 
Uh, you don't have my vote. Sure. So. so for now, we will uh, keep the tuck and neck on there for adding to the double yellow line and the white, white fog lines. I can, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think you have yep. And then the stop lines. Right. Okay. And noted the move. If we could, I don't know, we have well, other lines that we're going to talk about here before we summarize. Sure. You could speak all you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'd like to see the budget put together with the numbers that you have, or even if it's just a printout, so we can take a look at the total, so we can take a look at the direction that we're headed. <clears throat> We've also already increased the paving warrant article, but I don't know. And we're going to have to, um, no, yeah. and there are other expenses that are going to change in your operating budget. So I just want to see what kind of trend we're working on here. Before. And we do need to present your budget within the next couple of weeks. You know, so we got to start getting there. Okay. Yep. Speaking, yep. speaking of that, could you have your budget available by um, the 30th of October? I think so. I that think way, I think we could talk about it at town meeting, at the voting, when we have a long meeting. A preliminary would be good. If you well, I gave you guys one last time we met. Right, but we've made some changes here. Right. So if we could do another, and I'm sure you've got it on your laptop or wherever. So if we could just make the changes, get the other preliminary to us, so we can look at it. And then I, I'm, in, I'm in agreement if we do election day budget on the road, that would be yeah. great. Yeah. Okay, so before October, I mean, November 1st? Octo October 30th, 30th, Friday. That way we have it for the weekend and for Monday to... Tuesday is election day the following week, so... November 3rd. What are we electing? What's that? Yeah, it's, 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 it's just a, it's, it's a primary thing. It's yeah, it's well, on Thursday. Thursday. It's last night, right? Yeah. Oh. So, while we're talking about road striping, uh, when, in your opinion, is the best time to stripe roads? Uh, yellow lines and or white lines. And the reason I ask is it, it seems to me that the state tends to do the white lines in the fall. Uh, and I, I'm not sure, I don't know that they necessarily do the white and the yellow at the same time. And so, one thought that I have, I guess, is if you have fresh white lines before the winter, does that help in terms of people using them in the winter time, or, well, or not? I mean, if we put them down early in the year, then they get. I think used. they help in the summertime too. Okay. You know, especially with dark rainy nights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and they get plowed off in the winter time. So mm -hmm. we've been doing it. Is we found actually that the earlier, you know, that we get on that schedule. It gets done quick. Well, that's when you have heaviest traffic is during the summer. So the other thing is the the white lines, for example, up by his house as you go up Ham Hill. Years ago, that was the first road that you put the white lines on, and guess what? It cut your cracked pavement. The the, the trucks and the vehicles now track more toward the center line because remember, for the first couple of years you were here, you were almost monthly up there repairing. Uh, I mean, there's still shoulders. some, still some there, but it's it's helped. Yeah, it certainly has helped. Um, but you know, trying to get the line strikers to come in, in the falls like pulling teeth. It's mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we had we moved it when we didn't have any striping to do on the new pa after the new pavement was done. We moved it to spring, mm -hmm. and they show up like clockwork. It just seems to work out so much better. Now, the other thing with striping, I was over talking to Mr. Eldridge, who is the, uh, your equivalent in Ossipi, and next year is when they do Sawyer, um, Sawyer Road. Doesn't it make sense for us to do our section at the same time? I would think so. I and mean, they're going to strike both sides of our sec, you know, both sides and not ours, it wouldn't make sense. Right. But that's up to you guys to decide that. That's my opinion. They're going to strike Sawyer Road? They, we, they're going to redo it, but we, we have a, what, a half a mile section that's ours. Okay. And it was recently paved, you know, and it's never been striped. So, 
Osby Stripes Sawyer Road? That, their section, yes. Okay, I guess I haven't been over it recently. Uh, it goes past the intersection of Phineas Ridge, right? Yeah. I, I, I know where it is. Uh, I, I'm just, I, I didn't remember that it was striped. And so that, that's, uh, and I guess if their section is striped on both sides of ours, it probably makes yeah, sense, that makes sense. To, to, to stripe it all the way through. Job. Spend the money like we got it, right? <laughs> <laughs> so and I, and I think we, we will continue to look for money to help with the road prep okay. for, the, for the next year's projects. Pretty good. Yeah, and hopefully we'll have a, a light November, December, and we'll have a little money left over in your budget. Oh. Well, I like his idea, and I, I bought into it 100%. Is let's say, for example, you have X amount left over. If you have a vendor, as long as it's in writing, we encumber the money like we've done here, and it's allowed you to get ahead a little bit. That right? worked. Well, that worked right. well for us this year. Right. But that, but the sooner we can identify some money now, yes. he can get he can get that road prep, some of that road prep work that that will benefit from being done and overwintered before we do the paving. Uh, done. I mean, it's great we have the money left at the end of the year and we can tie it to a project we're going to do in the spring, but road prep work that, that would benefit from being done this fall, we can't, uh, can't do we lose the advantage if we have to wait a little spring to, to get to it, right? Yep. When we're talking about winter, I know that uh, you and I have had conversations about two sand pits in town. Is that sand viable rather than having to buy it from out of town? Um, so I did look into one of them. Yes. And uh, at this, it's it's not viable for this year. Uh, he he said it's not going to happen this year. Um, one of the ones that we talked about. Um, the other one we don't know yet. I'm hoping that's still the case. We're going to try our best. We're looking into it. Yeah. I like the idea that you, when you spoke to me, is you like to keep the money in town. Well, it, it, it saves it, a ton of money if we don't have to travel. And that, that was the other thing, so you know, you're looking to yep. save the town some dollars. Thank you for your efforts. And if you want, I'd be glad to ride around with you and do, type up the inventory of uh, stock lines. Okay, yeah, we could probably do that at the same time as we finish. Plus, you get a lot of nicer truck than he does, so he likes to ride around with you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but we'll finish up the. Uh, for the inventory signs that we took, that we started. All right, thank you. Have Thanks. a great day, be safe. Hello, sir, how are you? Okay. Hello. Steve Wingate, how are you doing? Good to see you, sir. Go ahead. So, do, do you have Public or non-public for us? Did I hear we have a secretary? You do. Uh, it's not today, but yeah, we do. Um, it's going to take a little training, I think. She's been running a business for 30 years, so it's not like she's brand new at, at uh, accounting and that kind of business, but we do. We did bring her up to speed. <clears throat> Some of the aspects of what you're going to require, but I think it's a conversation you need to have with her about how you're doing. She's, and they bought the house we bought at auction a couple of years ago. Yes. No. Oh. So she can walk to work. Okay. She sure. has to. Yep. She's not going to be very yep. far she's away. Nice yeah. Young. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I think she's going to. Did you get the start time? Um, she's going to come in next week to meet with Diane and I either Wednesday or Friday to go over things. So I was going to give Linda a call and see if she wanted to come in and talk to her at the same time. I can also set up for you to talk to her at the same time. Um, she has worked for uh, Chambers of Commerce, so she knows. Yeah, she she says she knows how to do research, she knows how to find how to do things. And um, so 
so she's very flexible on days and nights. Good. Yeah. Wow. So she I, looks haven't I just found out this morning, so I haven't contacted the other person. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, hopefully she doesn't see it on YouTube. <laughs> she, but, um, she looks like she'd be a good fit. Mm -hmm. Plus, she can do some other work, as you probably heard me talking to the road agent, that there's some task-specific stuff that we can plug her into that will help us make decisions and help other departments. So. The other part of your job, which I think you do, probably, is that... Um, conservation fund and all the accounting that goes along with that for income and expenses and I think there's more money that's going to get dropped in there for that uh, forester service that you had talked about the last time I met. So here, here's a person who knows bookkeeping, knows how to do that sort of thing. So it takes some of that weight off of you as well. For Managing the thing. Yeah. So there. some good news. Yep. And you have more good news for us, right? Well, while we're still in public, do you have any questions for me on anything we're doing? Um, I guess it's non public, isn't it? Right. So, how's the Mirror Lake project coming? Uh, they hit a bureaucratic snag. Uh, we're we're trying to allow NRCS to take that burden if uh, and if that works, then we're not going to do anything other than cooperate with them. <coughs> and um, the position that makes the decision on a waiver there's a rule that you have to own the property for two years first and that's to keep people from speculating oh, buying and then giving it, yeah. assuming they're going to get financial help from NRCS and then buying the property uh, buy there is a waiver that. option and they applied for a waiver the landowners and uh, they checked you know, that the federal fiscal year ends at the end of September. Mm -hmm. They checked in September because they hadn't heard anything, and they said, oh, you didn't fill out your, uh, your financial disclosure properly. And so they did that and sent it in, and then they said, oh, new fiscal year, let's apply, let's apply it over again. And we can't take last year's application. That's what I heard from the landowner. I, ha I haven't heard the NRCS side because in their administration, they deal with the landowner, they don't deal with us. And they, they consider that private information. So. So, so when does their two years, they've owned it for a year now, right? Yeah. So. Well, not a year, not quite a year, but in this coming December, that would be one year. So you're saying that without the waiver, the yeah. transaction would just have to wait another year, basically. Uh, well, they could apply. It's a new fiscal year. They could apply and they could get an answer. Right. Whenever NRCS wants to work on it, and then they have to fit it into their schedule. Uh, as far as I know, that doesn't have to be a long delay. Just they have a bureaucratic process. It's, it's still our best option. Uh, the landowner is thinking long term, so it, he's not walking away. He's going to go through the redo it, resubmit his application. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're just waiting for to get a new answer. I I spent a lot of time with him this summer. You know, he's worried about things like the subdivisions he wants to do, and he was worried about the town beach situation and some of the public situations there that he didn't anticipate. And it was kind of a surprise for him, some of the things that were going on. And I, every time he had a question, 
I, I would meet with them. So I have a pretty good relationship with them. And I think uh, the last thing he told me was he was in it for the long haul. You know, when things work out, it works out. If it doesn't, if NRCS says no, then we'll go with our option, which we have, we have time on that. And I believe we have three years. Mm -hmm. And that should be enough time. Is there anything we can do to assist you, or do you have it all under control? Well, I would have asked. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, it's just, you know, it's a big federal agency. Yep. Uh, they've been going through the same kind of turmoil everybody else has. They had, you know, positions to fill and couldn't do it because people couldn't move. And then they finally did get somebody, and there was a huge backlog of work that was piled up in between. It's kind of like that. I have, I've had one person in the organization saying to me, what can we do to make things better for you? And I tell them, and say, you know, we're partners in this. We're advocates. We can help from our end. Yeah, yeah. All we need to know is where things are and what's going on. That's as far as their organization goes. And now this said, by golly, we should be more open. I'm going to go work on that. And then I hear from the person who's, the, so the technician kind of that works on this, mind your own business, kind of, mm -hmm. response. Uh, we can only deal with the landowner. So that's, that's the way it's been going. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on the uh, Board of Supervisors for the Carroll County Conservation District which is kind of the volunteer civilian arm for NRCS. So that's a very positive organization, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, at the state level, it doesn't really penetrate into the NRCS organization. At the county level, we're very close. Mm -hmm. But this, this decision and this program is, is run through the, the uh, state organization. Good. Anything else for us? Uh, the forestry plan thing, I, I believe uh, we're just, uh, Linda and I drafted a letter that met uh, what uh, Matt Young wanted business-wise to make the donation. I believe that will be going out any time now. And, uh, you know, the forest is ready to work. And you cleared up the... It, we don't need to be a 501c3, and we're not. <laughs> right. So, but we, you can still yeah. accept charitable contributions. We, we got right. the right. It's, it's, we got the right words in the letter. Okay. Right. Yeah, it's a different line in the code. And if you go back to the Milfoil brochure, it's got that in there. Remember when we put that brochure together years ago? I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I remember working on it. Because at that time we. Said, Dug out of the. But I I knew we could take the I just yeah. didn't know how to. I just didn't know how to say right. it. Right. Right. <coughs> yeah. He yeah. wants to be able to show something to his accountant that the, exactly. the actual business is going to be making the donation. Right. That, that yeah. Young personally. Right. It's all about taxes. Hmm. Yeah. Taxes drive lots of yes. decisions. We're going right. to. So we're still meeting remotely. Uh, we have one member who has underlying health issues, mm -hmm. and she's been firmly told by her doctor not to take any risks. So mm -hmm. we're planning to continue meeting remotely. And if if, if I can get if you if you want, I can try to get somebody to help you, like log in on this computer here if you can't do it at all. Right. Uh, and then. So you're doing Zoom meetings? So yeah. Like well, are uh, you doing so it from your meeting? Go to meeting. Yeah. Are you doing it from your home? I am, yeah. I'll work with it. Sure. I, I, I personally think that, you know, it's, it's something we should be doing. If we, if we don't have a reason to meet face to face. No, we, we are going to have a face to face meeting out on the, uh, the new property we, we just, uh, acquired uh, mm -hmm. last June, 
uh, in, in do a walkabout. Uh, some of our members have never been out there. And then talk about some management issues. <coughs> for example, right now, the road that goes in there is wide open for anybody to go in. And do we want to continue that? Uh, this, we've already agreed to uh, cooperate with the snowmobile trail that's there. And that fits in the easement. Uh, but we we should make some contact with the snowmobile club. Just talk about things, uh, maintenance Wait. issues, and things like that. You talk about snowmobile club. Dennis is trying to contact them because there's a trail, that snowmobile trail, that comes into the parking lot, and they want to drive across uh, 109 and onto the lake through the beach, and he wants to communicate with them. What was the easiest way of doing that? So if you want to hit base with him, uh, he could use your help. Because he's, I understand he's been trying to reach someone and they're kind of busy because there's no snow. Yeah. Yeah. But here again, the beach project and that rampway has been updated. And the contractor told me it's safe in the winter for a snowmobile to go over. How do we get them from the parking lot to the ramp? Yeah. Dennis is willing to work on that with someone. Yeah, and I guess it's just a review of the agreement. I don't know if there's a written agreement. There should be with the Snow Machine Club transiting that conservation property. I'm sure they're going to want to keep the trails managed, maybe build bridges. I don't know. But just so that we all are on the same page as to correct yeah. use of the property. Yeah. And I think it's. They're generally a good partner, but in any partnership, you need to know what the rules are. I got involved with, with that section <coughs> at uh, 19 Mile Brook uh, when they built that trail, uh, that uh, bridge, and uh, we had some public members uh, say that there was an erosion situation going on in there uh, because of the trail. Well, uh, I contacted them. We all went out and looked, and the, the trail was in good shape except for what was coming off of the Witten Trust uh, property there. And then they hardened that. To, they hardened that part of the trail, the new trail access. Uh, but I, I, had a, I had a really, really good relationship with them. Three, three members came out. <coughs> and we, uh, we talked about all of that, and they, were, uh, they had a contractor in. Uh, well, uh, uh, Jeff Moody, Moody uh, within a couple of days, uh, hardened this uh, spot where the weather erosion taking place. Yep. But it wasn't making it to the 19 mile front yet. So we got, I think they've got that fixed. We are keeping an eye on that. Uh, I think you know where, where the 19 mile brook situation is we can expect uh, by the end of November a yeah by the end of well actually I think we're going to get early November we're going to get a proposed monitoring plan that FP Environmental is putting together that's day four to day and four mm -hmm. and then we're, we're probably going to have the month of November to work out anything any way we want to change it, or yep. we want to get some information about it, and then uh, then the final idea will be available to Dave in early December, so he can get it in his budget and start in 2021. I, I think that's that's all positive. And have they turned that system back on, or is that still in testing? Uh, I I believe it's still off, but I. I yeah, I'm not. I I hadn't heard anything different. I, I heard that it was still. I think the, the, the plan was that they were going to, because of all the improvements they made in the way of infiltrating water into the system, that they're going to be able to leave it off until they got all those fixes made. I think they, that's a. I think that was the last thing I heard. Well, your plate is full. <laughs> Anything else? I, was, I actually I figured this out. I was putting in a good 20 hours a week. That's a full-time job. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>
it's, it's getting weary. Well, thank you for your efforts. It's appreciated. All right. And now we have some non-public with you, right? Do you want to do the others yeah. before the non-public? Do uh, you want to what? Do your signatures and all that, so you can go to non-public and then leave, because you have other non Or do you want to go do you in and out? Now? Yes. What do you want to do, sir? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Let's finish, finish all Sorry. the public stuff. Thank you. Uh, the first item is uh, to Jennifer Coulter. The uh, response grant application has been approved for the total of $5,000. If you've read the paperwork. So you just need to, we've been um, giving disbursement information. This is election related, right? Yeah, yeah. we're getting. Yep, okay. She applied for a grant and we received. Yep, great. So is there a motion to uh, sign it? So uh, I'll move that we have the chairman sign the <coughs> grant agreement. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, I'll do that right now. Today's the 16th, right? It is. Same possible. Now the second item is a payment agreement involving property tax map 3213. Have you folks read it? No. Okay, so um, put it right in there. Thank you. You have in the computer Tom, uh, the gentleman John Rich from Cybertron that you decided that you're going to use until the end of the year, until we get the RFPs all done for next year. Um, he gave you two options. You can either do at a discounted rate um, a retainer with him or you can just go by an hourly rate till the end of the year and he gave you those two options in the what right I gave there. you. Right there. Um, that's something you need to decide on. The cola has come in at 1.3. Okay. Okay. questions like um, Clay was supposed to get a computer is he supposed to go through John Rich or is he supposed to wait on it um, fire department has some issues that they need to take care of they don't know whether to go through John Rich or wait till 2021 I mean, well, no, they were in this year's budget <coughs> we're gonna hire him yeah so have him do it let's go okay. get some work okay yeah. 
So, um, is there a motion? Well, I don't know what we have left for. Maybe we can figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll I mean, I don't know that it makes any difference because he's he's given us a blocks of time for a certain dollar figure. Which but if which he goes over that amount of time. Computer software lease and supports. We have seventeen thousand four hundred forty-two dollars and eighty-four cents left. That's under financial administration. And that's if that's if we got in every all the last right. ones. Yeah. So computer, computer maintenance and IT support. Further down, we have four thousand left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I I will move that we purchase a twenty-five hour block of time, twenty-six hundred and twenty-five dollars. That saves us five dollars an hour over the just straight building rate, and and that that ought to be more than enough for to take us to the end of the year. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Motions made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anything that have to be signed? Oh. Uh, no, he's going to create one once you make a decision. Okay. Next thing is COLA came in at 1.3. If you guys want to make a decision, I can get it to the department so that Monday we might be able to have some budgets for you. Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve a 1.3% increase in cost of living. Yes. And I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Along that line, can we ask the other department heads to have their budgets in? We were planning Friday on Friday the thirtieth. Oh, we, we need want something. We need something. We're trying to going to do. We're going to try to do some for Monday okay. for you. Because okay. we're the twenty seventh coming up. Okay. Right. So we'll get as many as we can. I think fire is pretty much ready over this. Well, I could. I, I know that planning is, was submitted two weeks ago, so I don't know. Okay. We submitted Diane, so okay. I don't know. it's just I'll hanging there Diane. now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. ZBA is in planning, and that piece didn't come from the planning board, so okay. someone needs to touch base. She well, Jackie yeah, has spoken to her this that's, morning. That's and fine. Said she was anyway, yeah. so that was that was available to us last time we met, but it didn't show up. It didn't show so up. anyway. Um, All right. If you back up a, a, a little bit here, Kathy, Eric Mayer, please review his email. Uh, that's that's going to be non public. That's why I'm skipping that section there, so all the way. Okay. It's non public. Okay. Anything else in public? Um, yeah. Um, so, Paul Zimmerman, somebody needs to. I don't, I don't understand what we need to do. We've had a meeting that's on. It's on YouTube, you can watch it on YouTube. What does he need from us? I don't know, you guys had said back when... No, but this is, that's all he gets. Okay. If he wants some sort of written statement about our policy in the police department, he's going to have to write it himself and bring it in and submit it. Okay. Uh, that's just my position. You guys can love him or leave him, but that's where I'm at on that. And did the fire chief's uh, statement help him at all? Um, he didn't answer me. I did send it to him, though, okay. hoping that that would um, yep. answer as part of it. So, uh, Then the next gentleman would like to talk to somebody about the Internet. I was not, I'm not aware. I'm not up to date on what your plans are. Well, the, is that broadband, or is it Internet? Uh, on He's the, just trying to find out what he yeah. says he has basically no internet out in Cow Island and didn't know what the future plans were for the town. And he just wanted to speak with someone that might be up to date on that. And I didn't know. I'm well, we can sure. include that in our uh, discussion with the cable company, but I know we don't have any leverage over them. No, that. As right. far as the uh, broadband is concerned, that's up in the air as to whether Tufton Road is going to qualify to be part of that initial program because we have islanders who I guess claim residency full-time on the islands mm -hmm. and part of the um, rules for getting the government grants to implement broadband is that every household every permanent resident household has to be connected well, in order to do the islands you're talking about a lot more money yeah. so I broached the subject of having 
the broadband committees or, or the co-op is going to do it, give us a number. What's it going to cost? Because rather than let everybody in Tufton Road be without, what's it going to cost to hook up a couple island properties? And maybe that's something Tufton Road has to pay for. About on broadband, there's about five or six letters mm -hmm. in correspondence, and I, I paper clip them together so you can review them. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Dan would like an answer from one of you if you guys are, somebody's going to be available to, for pre-processing pre -processing absentee ballots on Friday, October 30th at 10 a.m. Is anybody want to? I'll, I'll volunteer if someone uh, if, if two of us do it, does it go faster? I, I don't know if that makes a difference. I think they just need an elected official and, and actually I think um, I think Bill Rollins is coming and he's considered Bill Rollins is gonna yeah. be here. Yeah. And, so I don't know if uh, But he's looking for help from a selectman. As I yeah. mentioned before, I'm away that yeah. day, so I I'm not available. So Chip is available, but I don't think he wants Chip since Chip is on the ballot. Okay. okay. So Lloyd, are you interested? So let him know you will be there. Sure. Okay, you'll be there. Okay. Um, so uh, Carroll County Broadband, are you interested in moving forward with forming a communications district planning committee? They asked that question. They did. Right. And and that and that, as I re remember reading the email, is that's something that has to go on the town warrant. Oh, okay. Right. So I'm in favor of it. Um, yeah, I think we need to look at the language and figure sure. out how to go about doing it. Yep. So uh, at, at, at this stage, I don't think there's a... I, I think there... The, the idea I got from what I read is they want to know who's... Who is going to commit to? Are we going to? We don't. We can't. You can't make as a board commit the town. Okay. Right. Town meeting has to do it. But are we going to commit to putting it on the warrant? I think that's what they for consideration, about. and and I support that. Anybody else? Is that a motion? I move that we uh, uh, recommend. Commit. Yeah, that we. Uh, place uh, a, uh, an article on the warrant for the formation of a communication district planning committee. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 You'll make the notification. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next thing. Uh, Rick would like to know if anyone's interested in any of these positions. Secretary or Vice Chair of the Caltown Board Band. No? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Bill, I guess you are the joint loss representative. Right. Caleb's trying to find out if we should be starting meetings again, or are we still yes. under... No, Do you, we should be. Do you want to continue as the rep? Uh, I'm fine with it. Okay. Okay, I will contact Caleb. And I think that's about all I have, except you also got a letter in... From Susan, sure. Yeah. That would like an answer. And do you guys want to do that, or do you want me to respond to her in some way? Uh, we asked Clay to uh, come up with the cost, right? So, yeah. so she requested something, and we agreed to something similar, but not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And she's unhappy that we didn't. Mm -hmm. That, that we didn't roll over and say whatever you want, we'll give you. Mm -hmm. So we're, we've agreed to uh, to review mm -hmm. the uh, paper recycling, paper recycling uh, and uh, uh, identify the the costs associated with it, and uh, mm -hmm. and bring it. Uh, forward to town meeting if there's uh, for consideration uh, <coughs> if there's a cost involved. Okay. All right. All right. That's I think all I. I had one thing I wanted to bring up under public session. Would it be appropriate at our election day to have uh, Matt in 
and talk about the master plan, need for legal fees, the plowing of driveway. He's got a budget permit. I mean, yep. Bill said the planning board budget's in. Okay. It is. just haven't had a chance to see it. Right. Diane's got and also discuss the secretarial position along with the master plan. I think the secretarial part of that's going to have to be done public. Mm -hmm. right. I, we haven't had the, have you gotten word back on it? Right. Okay, so we don't have any firm information on that. And I don't think we're, I don't know. If we're going to get in the business of, of changing horses in midstream, we need to be thinking about doing that in non public initially. Yeah. Because I mean, reputation start yeah, flying right. around. I mean, this, all I'm doing is going through my list of things that have been mentioned and we haven't followed up on. I have no agenda here, one way yeah. or the other. I mean, I don't think it's a bad idea to have Madden, but I mean, a lot of it is under. Under his control, we just. Well, I'm not trying to be the, yeah. the boss either of that, that committee, so. Okay. Um, I didn't bring it up when Jim was here about the rocks on Brown Road, but I'll wait for a later time. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else for public? Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Uh, the landfill uh, monitoring do? Um. I have an answer from Larry Gill, and I have an answer from Clay. I just didn't know what was going on today. I just got the last one from Larry this morning. So, so that's a. That's so a I thought Monday. Monday. Yeah. Monday. I have it set up for Monday, and I. Do you want to review what he said? Uh, I, I just wanted to say that I I haven't had time to work on it, but uh, so I asked Larry to do it, and I, and uh, he has copied me on everything he's done. He hasn't rendered an opinion. He provided information, uh, and I would I would encourage you to look at that information. There is one bidder who's five thousand dollars lower out of a thirty thousand dollar range than anybody else, and uh, he looks good. He looks like somebody who operates on his own uh, and has very little overhead, which may allow him to bid lower. It would be good to check a reference. He is he's monitoring a uh, for another town right now. Mm -hmm. It would be an opportunity to check um, how they like it. But I I think that's worth pursuing. I, mm -hmm. And and there, Larry looked at four companies that whose bids were close in the twenty eight to thirty thousand range. Uh, in this in this information, I mean, he didn't look at the others. They were all higher or significantly higher. But, but I, and it's all copied. I can give them to them to you before you leave, so you have yeah, all the that would be that. helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And he's he's willing to come in and tell you what he knows. He's he sent each one of them some questions about uh, what labs they use to do their analysis. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that was all comparable. You know, it, there wasn't any problems there. And he sent some questions about what kind of equipment to use, uh, particularly in terms of uh, the, the uh, F the new thing. <laughs> Everybody's excited about. Uh, There's been some opinions about. Kind of I think we've got good answers with that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I think it's, it's more down to reputation than, uh, yeah. than so yeah. $5,000 is going to not turn the tide. I think it's, it, it does, I mean, I, I, I appreciate the notion of having a single person doing work. Is maybe more in keeping with what we might need, as opposed to dealing with a company. Um, but as you say, well, we'll Larry asked him check some know, references. I guess one questions. thing we could think of was, uh, you know, what if he gets sick, or you know, some kind of somehow incapacitated and right. can't right. carry on. And he says he has a is a company that he collaborates with uh, that 
and he, he gave the name of the company and uh, they supply a lot of technical services for him and, and he says they have an agreement to cover to cover him at, at, at the same cost if something happened. I, I think I would want to see that agreement yeah. if, if hopefully it's in writing but outside of that I, I thought that was worth looking into. I just wanted to get stick that in there. We're doing that Monday, I guess. Yep. Yep. I, yeah, but you have all the paperwork from Larry well, and Clay. So. One last thing on the public. The CIP committee would like to meet with the selectmen on the 28th of uh, October. That's a Wednesday? Yes. I'm out of town. What are you doing on the 28th? Uh, they would like to oh, know. Oh, is that their meeting? Their meeting. They would like to know what our um, intention is with the police station. How much and when? Yeah, I'm sure they would. We would too. Uh, <laughs> Wait, yeah, that's, I think that's, after the election we can meet with them. I don't know that we need to meet with them. Well, oh, okay. They, they're they're trying to. They're trying. They're trying to I'm, sort I'm, out all their projects. I have the message. Yeah. The other thing is, I did some research gave them some tentative figures. Kathy, could you check with <coughs> Larry, excuse me, Tyler Phillips Jr. and see if you can give an estimate for Union Wharf project, a dollar figure, and Lake Road project, a dollar figure? Yeah. Uh, I couldn't uh, find those uh, anywhere. I know she well, I know the Union Wharf was still up in the air. I mean, are we going to play hardball and do the whole thing? Well, let's... That's, that's 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 what we're trying to right. put together. That number is different than doing just a portion of the right. Yes. Right. I think we, well, whatever those figures are, I'd be glad to give them to. Them. The other thing is the Tufton Road Neck Road Bridge. The correspondence I have is the town share is one hundred and eighty-three thousand seven hundred dollars, and they say they have the most recent paperwork of one eighty-one. So two thousand dollars. And I'm going. I don't know which is accurate. No, I have it in writing. That's from a year ago. So. And I don't think either of those figures are accurate in today's market. I mean, they, they were established a couple of years ago, as, as I remember. Yep. Right. 2016, so the cost 2017. Is, yeah. yeah. So okay. I think well, what I've done is I've passed that. You can just help me on two of those, Kathy. I'd appreciate. It. And just. So what? It, so what am I? I'm doing the title, Phillips. That's what you want. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, but there wasn't a second one. Right? The bridge? Yeah, the uh, Tufton Borough Neck Road Bridge. I'd say you saw a higher figure. Yeah. Because it's going up, it isn't going down. But that was my comment. And, and it's not this year or next year. No. Right. So you don't need me to look into that? You no, it. unless you have it someplace. I, I was. I can't. I was. Three percent. Comics? Or do we want to go to non-public? Well, let's just get that out of the way. Go ahead, sir. I, I accepted service of process from the Sheriff's Department uh, for a uh, town issue. Um, what day was that here? Monday? Uh, no. Monday is not Tuesday. Anyway. Yeah. So, um, I think it's been sent over to Sager. Uh, no. No? I gave it to Rob because he would handle that. It's assessing. Okay, so it's an assessing issue. Sure. Well, I'll let you know. We're expecting service of process on another issue as well. And if you're here, here around here, I guess that's a little bit. Yep. That's it. Bill? Anything? Nope. Hello. Uh, earlier today you were going to, you're going to go into a non-public. Are you coming out of a non-public and still delving into that's stuff you had mentioned that was still left on the table today. Or are you going to get to that? Or? I, I have nothing. To no, we you did. Have That's why we did it all before we got to the non-public. Okay, he had mentioned something to you. He says to the effect that it's raining today, so we might as well get into some paperwork that you had. There. I'm just asking the question. I don't care. I, I have nothing on my agenda to bring up public. Yeah. I have nothing. No, no, no. I just heard that <laughs> yeah, I asked you the have question. To hang okay. Roll it up. Is there a motion to go into non-public? Uh, yep. I'll so move. Uh, and that is for... Uh, I think it's 